Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're off to Chesterfield to see new to homebrew Tom. It's been a while. Uh, that reminds me, Jem. What? Sat nav. Shit. That's well. We have arrived. What's up, bud? Oh, aren't you the big plonker? Right then. Have we got everything? Well, Dogs? Yeah. Let's go and see Thomas. <laughs> oh, go on then. What's she called again, Tom? Oh. Bo. Bo. Yeah. I just hope she doesn't damage garden too much because we're having an open garden next week. Oh, right. For charity. Yeah. Because the weeds have really come on this year. Yeah. They? And normally don't go more like that. Well, they're dead. Now, are these oh. herbaceous perennials then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought so. Yeah. I think that's lettuce, that one, in the middle. All right. But you don't often get to see it like that in supermarkets, do you? Now there's a shot for YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> We've made it, ladies and gentlemen. Remember this guy? Anyway. <laughs> We've got to do a bit of a rundown before we get anything started, so uh, we may as well start from square one because it's been that long. So this, Tom, is what we call in the brewing world a hot liquor tank. And that's where your hot water goes in. Stew pot. Uh, no, no, you don't want to be putting any pork or beef or lamb products in there whatsoever. Just uh, hot water. That's what it's like. This, my friend, is called a mash tun. Stew pot too. Where we're going to put some grain in and hopefully add some hot water also. And this... Stew pot three! Hey! Now this is called a boil kettle or a copper. But this one's made out of stainless steel, so we'll call it a boil kettle. And this is where we're gonna boil the beer. Then this over here is called a plate chiller. And this is what we're gonna use to cool down the wort after we've boiled it. And then finally, we're gonna pop it into the fermenter. This is called a cylindro-conical um, fermentosaurus. Probably out of date now, actually. Massively, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then we'll ferment in there. Does fridge work? Yeah. Uh, big shout out to Dan at uh, Kecky. So he sent me this case of fuel. From Australia! Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know if he'll be uh, still working for the company, mate. It's yeah. been that long. He sent me a message <laughs> on the video up or up. What, recently? Yeah. Oh, nice one. Said I owe him about £300 for, <laughs> for shipping for alone. Shipping. No, he's a cracking lad, and uh, I've got something else that he sent me that I've got to showcase. Okay. It's only been about three years since he sent him this. You might want to save that for your video. Yeah, right? I'll, I'll get it out. It's obviously, you might not be watching mine. If you are, send me some stuff too. Yeah, that's where you want to send it. So we may as well get this brew day on the road, buddy. So of course, I've come dressed for the occasion. And, uh, you know, always the showman. Recipe. Caustic soda. chloride and calcium sulfate. Water chemistry. Whirlpool hops. Idaho 7. 220 grams. Dry hops. Idaho 7. 250 grams. With added vitamin C to keep you regular. 20 grams of saturated yeast. That's the brand, WHC Labs, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. One protoflock tablet. Run it out. Epsom salts. Run it out. 
250 grams of dextrin molds. <laughs> Come on now! Is that why you won't be <laughs> Yes! <laughs> oh yeah, freaking hell. So we've got some water on today. And uh, we're just looking at the mash temps and the strike temps and everything else. And uh, I think 78 for the strike temp. Airing on the side of caution a bit higher maybe than necessary. But it's easier in it to add a bit of cold than it is to add a bit of hot. And Tom's also got a bucket of extra um, RO water. For the sponge, should we need it? We shall need it. We shall indeed. Because I've got to get the uh, uh, herbs submerged. Yes, indeed. Which is so. Although, although there's probably enough in there to to do everything. There is the herbs. Yeah. So although there's enough there to, to do the whole lot, the mash, the sparge, the trouble is, because it's a Herms system, the Herms coil is not uh, submerged once you've mashed it. Yes. And thus you need to top it up. Extra vata. Yeah, which it, normally is no problem because you just run the tap in, but because we're using RO for this, which will be the only time I'm using RO because it's a faff, a waste of water, and uh, I've managed to find that 7 Trent actually gives you monthly reports, quarterly reports and a yearly report of what's in the water. So that, that's redundant now because I'll know. Um, so so yeah, what's, the, what's, what's your eBay account then? Um, reverse osmosis system available on <laughs> Facebook Marketplace <laughs> very soon. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll use it there for watering the uh, cactus. The, uh, yeah, because that's about how fast it goes, isn't it? Just, <laughs> just quick enough to keep a cactus alive. Just one. Yeah. If you had a very thirsty mouse, you would just leave it on, and it to be able to just take the little dewdrop off the end, <laughs> drink it, and then about ten minutes later, be able to come and have another one. <laughs> Get a mashed in. Look at them legs, ladies and gentlemen. They look like hard working legs to me. Legs of an athlete, mate. Athlete's foot. <laughs> so we're just draining off the mash. The mash is complete and everything's actually worked. And uh, apart from the fact that I didn't have Tom's um, profile, system profile, which means that some of our volumes 83 liters up or out that doesn't matter because what we're working to is our post 
boil gravity. So we've gone from post boil gravity which is about 10.59, we're going to knock 4 or 5 points off of that for the pre-boil which gives us around 10.54, 10.55 and we've hit around 10.51 so we've shut everything down and we're just draining the mash tun off now. We'll boil, see where we go uh, with this and if we hit them final numbers. I did provide a bit of extra grain so we uh, I've got a little bit of leeway if we're a little bit under, but ultimately, as long as we're hitting around the 5.8 to 6.3 mark, and there's enough to fill one of them bad boys. Who's Mark? Mark? <laughs> yeah, as long as we can fill a corny, it'll be a, a productive day. Who's horny? We know you're always horny, Tom. I can tell from this side angle, look. Tell from me bulge. Yes. What can I say? In every area cold. So what we're doing, recirking a bit of the um, boil. We're going to have to set up to recirc at some point anyway, aren't we? For um, oh, the chiller. It's probably worth putting chiller in line. We're getting that a bit of heat treatment when we're to boil as well, eh? Do you know how to use one of these? Do I know how to use one of these? You son's a bitch. So which end do you blow into? Hmm? Which end do you blow into? Okay. Now there's no way I'm not going to record this bit because you are going to get third degree bit. Oh, you're going in there? <laughs> I'm going out to it way now. He's going to bed, ladies and gentlemen. He's off to bed, he's had enough. Oh. Yeah, so we're about to start chilling, and I have a funny feeling this could result in uh, hot water firing on somebody accidentally. So let's get the camera set up. Yeah, we'll be fine, mate. You've been framed 500 pounds, here we come. There we are, look at that for a shot. Oh, if only. There's my thumbnail, anyway. Well, actually, we're still five minutes away, so, uh, cut. Four, three, two, one. Well done, Tom. You've achieved boil on your on your <laughs> on your three year old new brew kit. Hey let's turn this off. Turn that off, turn element off. Element off. Element off. Ready. So we've just done a pre-boil uh, gravity post-boil gravity check and we're a few points high so we're gonna add a couple of litres of RO water to bring us back to 10.59 and he's about to fire up the hose pipe for the plate chiller for the first time. Second time. Is it second time? Excuse me, he's, uh, he's hiding around corner at the minute. It's camera shy. Hello! So let's just get, uh, get everything in shot. What do you think about that? There we go. So is it chilling? Yeah, how much more water do we need out of there? Well, it will look like we're off the boil. Shall we put a bit of that RL in? Whoa! What do you think? Yeah, it's not too bad. You reckon two litres? Just before it gets too cold. There we go. One jug. That's your trunk. And then there's enough for sedimented bottom of the Fermenter, you should get 19 litres in bulk out of that, my lad. Is this a uh, bit for this? Oh, there we go. So, yeah, just keep an eye on that. 10, we're down to 91 already. Coming out to there at 31. Yeah. Das ist gut, ja? 
we'll pull and everything out. 89, we're getting there. Yeah, so you're at 20... 87. Two litres, just shy. Yeah, it's dropping really quick. But those plate chillers are efficient. Yeah. Is it whirlpooling? It is as well, yeah. It's got some whirlpool action. So we have an action shot then. I mean, really, you should be going to Tom's video for all of this. The close-up stuff. He's picked his camera up all of four times. So, uh, yeah, you can see we've got a bit of whirlpool forming. And there we go, mate. You're about ready to shut her down. 81. 80.654. 3, 2, 1. She's off. Bye. She's off. We'll just let that whirlpool a bit and uh, stabilise. Looks like it's going to stabilise a little bit lower. As long as we're over 76, we should be alright. Yeah. 76.6.5. We might actually need to eat her up again. <laughs> we want to get all the bitternesses coming out of this whirlpool thing you see. Shall we just give her a little bump? Mm. Just because we've not added any bittering hops to this beer, all the bittering addition is going to literally come from this whirlpool rest. So we want to be at 80 degrees, otherwise the lower the temperature, the bitterness drops off a cliff. You need to be above 80 to get any utilisation. Well, you don't have to be, but that's how we've um, that's how we've geared this recipe up. So that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna do. And seeing as we're not boiling, we're just bringing it back up to 10. And probably just whack that up to 100% to save the PID. Yeah, I didn't expect it to go that quick, to be honest. Yeah. That flew down in like, what, 15, well, less than a minute that was, wasn't it? Yeah. It is a big plate chiller though, just for a 25 litre batch. The ones that I've seen people using for 25 litres are probably half the size of that. I don't mess with that. That was the biggest one that they sold, didn't it? Because I got the same one. Was it Malt Miller? What's his name at Malt Miller? Oh, uh, Ma that's him. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy Marago? No, no, his brother. Oh, Andy Marago. Oh, I think it is. Santino Marago. Yeah, from Spain, aren't they? It's originally. C. C. Okay. Or are they inland? I can't remember. Inland? Inland. Revenue. Don't talk. Oh, hello. Yeah, we've dropped right down to 70. And uh, there would be probably half as much utilisation of those alpha acids so it wouldn't be a balanced beer because when I've tried this on at the brew shed it's just about right in fact it could do with a, a tweak more bitterness if anything it, it could it could stand it so we wouldn't want any less I think otherwise you'd end up with just like a, a really flat sweet beer which is probably not what we're going to be looking for is it come again <laughs> that was a fart this time. <laughs> so we're back up. 79.3, 79.4. Just took a minute on the uh, on the elements to get it back to where we want it to be. Oh. These Idaho 7 are really good, man. They're really, really, really good. 220 grams. Or 55. 220. It's quite a big chunk, yeah. isn't it? For 25 litres. So we're at 79.7 degrees. Almost, almost, um, almost 10 grams a litre, bud. Dump these in. Oh! Don't want to block your pump up. Oh. That's it. Pump off. Ooh, damn it! Beautiful. That's... The shit. It smells absolutely gorgeous. Oh my god. God. It's almost as fruity as your shit. <laughs> That's the loudest one I've got in wardrobe. <laughs> Beautiful.
That's it, look. Look how much effort he's putting into this recording. Right, do I have to? I'll tell you now, if it don't get filmed on that and edited on that, there's no more videos coming. <laughs> because I'm too busy, I haven't got time to film on the camera, take it off onto the computer. Yeah. Okay, I just cable up, download yeah. it. Yeah, I just much. haven't got the time, so if I'm going to come back to this, it's got to be done on that. And I'll, I'll even pay decent money for an editing suite. suite that I get on the phone. And then I can just do it on the phone. I just, I, it's the only way I'm going to do it. Just reminded me of that Lady Gaga song, Telephone. I could see you, you know that, that skit where she does it, she's in jail cells. And she's just wearing some like five dollar <laughs> notes above her. A, a little Lady Garden. Hell wow. I have to ask the question why you you hold this very perfectly formed butt plug <laughs> <laughs> in a menacing fashion actually. The way you're pointing the end of that at me uh, is making me wince. But I have to I have to ask the question. Yeah. Go on ask it then. Did you run out of paint or patience? Paintbrush broke. Get out. And you only brought one? Yeah. It's been down, man. Loaded. A full? Loaded fries. We have to use this now. Because you've hooked me up to thingy. What's it? Thingy magic. Oh, yeah, you're going to have some. Some back there. It's a good job I'm here, folks, getting this footage for him. What do you think you picked camera up for me? Uh, well, I don't want to be uh, blamed for that cracking screen that you caused earlier on when you dropped your phone off the floor. Tell me lies, tell me beautiful <laughs> lies. You're a good brewer, Tom. See how I drop that in, right? Oh, professional. Would you like the ring? Mm. Would you like me to pass you the ring? Give me a ring. Are you rinsing your ring, Tom? Yeah. <laughs> rinsing. Was your ring particularly dirty today, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, you're making me blush! Look at the size of that. We're off to Butter Moon to visit <laughs> Mr. Spoon. <laughs> That's one heck of a weather balloon. So this is how it's done. Around here. Who's got around here? Just like that. Huh? Well, you're not allowed to do that anymore, are you? Right, so what we're doing now is we're cleaning Tom's taps. Uh, gas first, in the right oil. This is um, pressure rated, right, to what you've got the regulator set at. 80 psi? Oh, really? Oh, we're on secondary regs. What are we on? 20? 10? That's 20, eh? One. That's 10. That's 10. That one's uh, 15. Damn it, where you fool! Oh, it's going so well. Yeah, we'll just push the caustic straight out with star sand. I keep rem uh, forgetting, remember forgetting. I keep forgetting what it's called. Which year? Country in Western Sink. Remember forgetting. Yeah. Sounds like it. Yeah. But yeah, because I use Persid all the time, I just want to say Persid. Is that a fly? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that's been dissolved. Uh, been in there for some time. Yeah. 
This might have come all the way from uh, your other place. It might have been a pinfold fly. There's a lot of shit in there. I think it's a flower, what is it? It's a beautiful flower. It's a beautiful day! If you was a botanist, what would be your favourite flower? Have you thought about it? My flowers. Flower. Are you a big fan of flowers? Orchid. Yeah. Orchid? Yeah. Mine's whole meal. Is that enough? I think so. You can just leave it in the lines, can't you, until next time. I'm using that today. Today? Well, not that one, would it? Uh, it'll not be ready today, though. <laughs> Is that how it works? No. Something worthy of note. Tom's decided to ferment this one under pressure. So under pressure. Da -da -da -da. Uh, when I made the Idaho 7 BR, well, two things different really. One, mine was only five. Uh, that's a good point. Yeah, mine was only five, four or five percent ABV, and I didn't ferment under pressure. But yeah, that's a good question. Why have you? Why has your things gone off? The back. Oh, that was odd, wasn't it, mate? Your time has gone now. <laughs> yeah. Easy yeah. IPA. Oh, we're at the 21, 21 degrees. That's good to me, Harry, 21 degrees. She's flowing in here, look, mate. Something to bear in mind, though, gaskets come off of this. Yeah. Just want you to put it back on. Hello, Poach. Come on out, Poach. Come on out, old boy. The official brew dog. There's four dogs here today. Four dogs. I wonder how many poos they've done. A lot. I've, we've witnessed a few. Yeah. Well, chances we know is um, he is literally a sausage factory, that boy. Prolific, isn't he? He can walk around, he, he can do a kilo and a half <laughs> on a, on a sit-in. Excellent. Right, that's 20 degrees. It's 73 degrees in the, uh, you probably not see it, in the boil pot. Um, and it's not green! Yeah! <laughs> but we're, we're sitting at 20 degrees. I mean, uh, into Hitherwoods, so I'll we'll leave that. And then you get to see in uh, real time this hop filter from uh, oh yeah, from the electric brewery. Yeah, which nobody will ever buy because we can't import things into the UK from America and it will cost too much. Yeah. So we're lucky, but, but we got one. Considering Tom's age, he's got a very strong stream on him. Always. That's your pelvic floor exercises, that, isn't it, mate? Oh, God, yes. See the element? So there's one element in here. Yeah. There's two in there. How many kettles you got in the house? One. One. So you don't have the fifth element. I'm available for um, weddings and bar mitzvahs. That belongs at a funeral. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> it's almost as dead as your YouTube career, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well this is the worst thing, even on the commercial world cattle. I don't do it every brew, because it's just simply too difficult. Oh! Someone's killing somebody. Somebody's killing somebody. So what I normally do at work is I'll brew four days a week and then I'll have one day for cleaning. On that cleaning day, I'll take them out, 
So from batch of beer to batch of beer, it's like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, they get a rinse and a caustic, and it takes them to about that stage. What it doesn't do on me is get, you know, all them little bits on the, on the curves. Yeah. I can't get in there unless I take them out, because I can't see it with Ozpark, with angle I'm attacking and that. Yeah. And then in there as well is also a bit of a bugger. Like that, is that, that staining? Yeah. That might be beer. I think that's well. Just saying, mate. Oh, uh, it might be. Don't shoot me. Might be colouring. I thought we passivated them all, though, didn't we? But either way, that's so much easier, isn't it, than trying to do it with your head in a pot. Yeah. So, one down, Juan, take what? And then let's have a look in here. Oh, look at that. Honestly, nice mate. That one in the middle. That hot, hot screen. Watch this one not ring. Uh, it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, but hope it goes there. I'll pull that one out, though, like you said, just for safety's sake, just in case something does happen. Yeah, no, there we go. Look how easy this is to clean now. Look at the quality of those welds, eh? I don't know, I can't remember who did it. I don't reckon a pigeon could shit meter. Oh, quality. Well, that bit's really good quality. That bit, not so much. But they've had a look all right, I reckon. The nice inside, though, that's where it counts. Because that's your hygienic side. <coughs> oh, I remember you. Your bolt with a slit in it, Tom. You your, remember him? Your, your bolt with a slit in it. Was that like $40 or something? <laughs> <laughs> you remember when you bought it and I was like, oh, it's a bolt with a slit in it. <laughs> yeah. I could yeah, hear I your heart remember, drop. I remember that, yeah, yeah. I remember it. <laughs> it. Yeah, you remember it? Yeah, I did, I did. I apologise. It hurt. It hurt. I'm not going to laugh. Or it hurt your wallet. Yeah. Oh wow. It's good to see that it's seamless. I mean, usually your brew days would take anything up to like 10, 12 hours, wouldn't they? In the past, you know, still, when you was doing a Cooper's kit. I'd still be doing it Sunday. <laughs> Sunday morning. It's a full two day affair. Remember that time that you spent 15 minutes trying to open a can because you thought it was a full tab? Yeah. And then you had to go and get a can opener yeah. out at kitchen yeah. drawer. And it were a tub of butter. <laughs> a tub of butter? Oh, they were the days. Well, if this do not turn out, mate, you can always go back to the Canadian Blondes. Bit of Craig Tube, just to, you know, <laughs> get yourself up to date with what, what's, in the, uh, what's in the zeitgeist of the brewing world. Oh, look at that. We're going up garden with that or that thing. Oh, it looks good, doesn't it? Has it got any aroma left in it? I can't really smell it from here. Oh, God, uh... Oh, it is doughy, isn't it? Yeah. Look at this. Shall we bake it? Bake it. There we go. That's the Idaho 7. 35 quid a kilo. Just chuck it down, drain. Put it on barbecue. This is a good thing about pellet hops. You don't have to worry much about uh, getting rid of them. Is that the utility company sort it? <laughs> On that report would be up, Bromard, Copper, Idaho 7. <laughs> Idaho 7, yeah. It's alright mate, they'll be dumping it into local... What river have you got running through Chesterfield? Have you got any? Derwent. The Derwent? The Derwent. Yeah, Derwent. 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 I just said it in a very silly manner, for no reason. 
I didn't know if it was a local lingo. Yeah. Man. So that's it, we're back home. Both of the doggies are absolutely starving. Even though they've had bits of burger and bread bun and all sorts. And uh, that's it, folks. We're gonna wrap it up. Me and this extremely loud shirt have had quite a long day. And it was really good to see Tom finally brew on his kit. And uh, here's too many more, my friend. So uh, cheers to Tom and cheers to everyone else watching. Uh, keep liking, keep subscribing because there's plenty more videos to come and we'll see you on the next one. And cheers.